What's up guys, it's the XC60 project here and today I have the rear shocks and brakes and handbrake shoes for a 2006 S60R. This S60R is my dad's S60R um, and it's pretty much stock. I've done the front struts, um, I did them in November and we put regular T5 springs on it so it rides like a centimeter or two higher. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much stock. His rear, his rear uh, shocks needed to be replaced, just like the front, and brakes also need to go all the way around. Uh, firstly, shout out to KT4 Performance for sponsoring the XC60, my XC60 build, which is outside of this garage door, parked outside in the cold weather. Um, and shout out to IPD USA and Viva Performance for the parts, IPD USA on the Monroe 4C shocks and Viva Performance for the uh, Volvo parking brake shoes and the Hawk Performance pads. They actually recommended these to me because they said that I'm not tracking the car and it's pretty much stock. These offer an improved braking performance as compared to the OEM ones and they don't make a lot of noise or a lot of dust. So we're just going to open up each part here. So these are the 4C shocks by Monroe. Monroe is the closest to OEM for the uh, R's, and that's because the R's are 4C So the 4C ones have this cable at the back, and this plugs in. And this is what makes you control the uh, comfort sport and advanced on the dashboard. So that's that. Now the parking brake shoes are for the rear. Now the parking brake on the R always gets stuck. And I actually don't know when the last time it was replaced. The rotors are still good. But, so I assume parking brake shoes. And these were bought by from Viva Performance. Um, so there's the parking brake shoe. And I, you only have to buy one because in one box there's both to each side. Now the pads. Here are the pads and hot performance. And the lube rotation for the, the grease for the brakes. And they also gave you stickers, but I took those out. The S60 yards are actually really cool because they have full piston Brembo's in the front and in the rear, and most uh, cars of that age, or of that time, only if they had big brakes, it would be four in the front and two in the rear. But the S60R has four in the front, four in the rear. The car is jacked up on jack stands and on blocks, and there's wheel chocks in the front, and the trunk is open so that I can access the nuts for the uh, shocks. So yeah. My plan is to not do this in one day, it's plan to do it kind of whenever I have the time um, throughout multiple days, so yeah. You will need a punch. Um, I used kind of both of these sizes. A hammer, um, where is it? A 13 millimeter to get the uh, caliper bolts off. And you will need a pair of pliers. This is for the parking brake shoe. Vice grips can help. And where did I put it? And on this impact is a 10 millimeter for the uh, rotor screw. Little update. Um, it's been a couple hours since I started working on it. Um, the passenger side is being a real pain in the ass with the uh, pins. So what I ended up having to do was actually had to cut them with a Dremel. Um, here are some of the pieces of that. Um, I sprayed what's left in here with WD-40 and I'm going to try to punch it out um, tomorrow morning after they've soaked in WD-40. The other side has been a lot easier. Um, I got both pins out, springs, and the caliper's off. I zip tied the caliper to the coil spring so that it doesn't put any uh, stress on the brake line. And now all you have to do is pop the rotor off 
and you have access to your uh, parking brake springs and shoes. Um, so I'll explain how to put these, how to take these off and on, and I'll make a video doing that when I put them back on. Um, for the mine as well, it's two 13 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper in back here on this bracket. And there's one at the bottom down here. Then of course the pins you have to punch out. And uh, I will be, tomorrow morning, I will go to my dealer because I get a discount there for uh, pins and springs for the front and the rear because I didn't realize that these would be such a pain in the butt to get at. Also, even though this car had all the symptoms of brake wear, noises, um, screeching, stuck brakes, locked up brakes. The calipers are fine, we've had that checked. Um, there's still a lot of pad on the pads. Like, that's a lot of pad. That's almost, a, that's actually probably more than a centimeter. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't know what to think, but I have the parts anyway, so I'm still gonna replace them. Um, I'm actually not going to do the suspension this time around. I'll just do the brakes, and then when our garage dries up a little bit, I will do the uh, shocks because you have to get under there to get the 4C plugs. So there, yeah, there's a little update. So it is the next day, and I have come back to remove the two pins that were stuck in this caliper. Last night I had soaked them in WD-40 and I let them sit overnight and then the remainder of the day because it is now the evening and I bashed them out eventually. Didn't have to do any more cutting, just a lot of bashing out and stuff um, to get them out. And I got them two out. Here are the remainders of what's left of the pins. One of them actually ripped and I had to punch out the end. Um, today I went to my dealer and I ordered uh, the new pins and springs for the rear, both sides and the front for uh, both sides when I do the front. I also ordered new parking brake uh, springs because yesterday I started getting apart the parking brake assembly and it's a little pain in the butt to do um but i noticed that some of the springs are pretty corroded and uh kind of misshapen i'm not sure if that has like anything to do with the performance of the parking brake probably doesn't probably just because they're old but i thought hey might as well just replace them while i'm in here and while i was at the dealer so now we get to do this to the other side and before i put the new uh parking shoes on I'm going to remove this piece, remove the bottom shoe, because I haven't done that yet. I'm just going to spray this with brake cleaner so that it gets all clean. And I will make a removal video of the other side of how to get to this point. So, let's say you hadn't gotten this far yet and you were just about to start doing the brakes on your S60R. So, for the rear, you're going to have the wheel, which is a three-quarter inch to get the wheel lugs off. And then there's your wheel. I had taken the pads out so that I could just get them out and focus on removing the pins that I were seized that eventually came out. So let's say that this you hadn't done any of this yet. So what you would have to do is you'd grab your punch and you, there's two pins. One is there, one is at the bottom. And you stick your punch against the pin and you'd hammer at it to get the uh, pin out. And if they're not seized, they will slide out across this way. And when you get one of them out, the spring, which sits like this on the caliper, will pop out. And you will have another spring or another pin to get to. And then once those are out, what you're going to do is it's up to you. You can put a cloth on the caliper side of things and you're going to grab your vice grips and you're going to compress the, the pads into the, into the outside of the caliper. 
and I will compress the pistons. And then what you're going to need is two is a 13 millimeter for this bolt right here, which is so there's a bleed valve. So there's that bolt, and there's another one down here. Now I have already loosened these because I got the pads out, and I can just focus on that. But they're going to be pretty tight, so don't expect nothing easy. So let's go ahead, and you might and you will also need a zip tie or a bungee cord. Because you, when you take the caliper off, you don't want to put any stress on the brake line. So you're just going to, or you can, uh, zip tie it or bungee it to the coil spring, to the control arm. Just somewhere where it won't just be hanging and putting pressure on your brake line. So, as I said, the caliper was already loosened a bit so that I could do that. So, now... <laughs> So there's one bolt, these are the 13 mil. And there's the other one. So here are the air calipers, the four pot Grembos. So what you want to do is just hang it like there, put the zip tie through the hole on the coil spring so that you don't put any pressure on your brake line. Once you have the caliper off and it's good to go, no stress on the brake line, you can go ahead and remove your rotor and this is with a 10 millimeter bolt. And it should just wiggle off. And then after this, your parking brake will all be behind there and we can get to that. So it is now evening number three of doing the brakes on the S6ER. Um, I have completed the other side. Um, the parking brake, the parking brake was a real pain in the ass. Um, but hopefully I have it figured out enough to do it pretty easily on the other side. Um, rotors on, rotor screws in. Uh, pads are in, pins, spring, pin, and the bolts on the back are tight, tight, tight as can be. No wiggling around at all. Motor spins nice and good. Um, and yeah, so that's, so today I picked up the pins and the springs from, so a spring kit for the handbrake and uh, pins and a spring for the uh, caliper. And then I also got the front ones. Um, they only ordered me one of these, I don't know why. So either they're gonna, either will come in on Monday or, and I'll just swap it out easy or I'll reuse whatever. Um, also, if you are doing brakes on an S60R, Especially the par specifically the parking brake on an S6ER. Only buy one spring kit. Because the guy told me he would order me two spring kits for the parking brake. Because I told him, you know, I need uh, the parking brake springs for the uh, driver and passenger side in the rear on a 2006 S6ER. And he's like, alright, I'll order you two spring kits. Well, in one spring kit, as you can see, there's enough for both sides on the rear. So now I have to return this. So you only need one spring kit. And I'll put the part numbers in the description for all the parts you will need. I'll put the pads um, from Viva, the part numbers there, the parking brake shoe part numbers, pins, blah, 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 all that stuff. So now you have the parking, last time, or last night I got the parking brake off and I didn't do anything else. 
So now I'm gonna show you guys how to take that so off. For the parking brake, there's a spring here, a spring here, a spring there, and a spring on the bottom. And then this, I don't know what this part is called, but it's the piece that when you pull the cable, it expands and it pushes these up. And that is what like locks it to the rotor and makes it so the rotor cannot spin. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is remove this. And so you will see when this comes off why these are so difficult and I will show you that and why they are such a pain in the butt to get. All right, there we go, that's one spring. This part, I don't know what the part number for this part is. You can probably order a new one if you want. But what I did on the other side is I just sprayed mine with brake cleaner and used a steel brush to clean it off. And that seems to do a good enough job. All right. So the reason why this this part, this spring, is kind of a hit and a miss, is because it hooks in, and you cannot see like which way it was put in. It can go one of two ways. It can go that way. This is really corroded, or it can go that way. Like, it doesn't matter which way it goes. And so that's why it's kind of a hit and a miss on if you get it out or not. So I got it all off. Um, I even took out the, uh, I still don't know what that part is called and sprayed it all down with brake cleaner. Um, so now you have that piece and your springs and this piece I cleaned with brake cleaner and a steel brush. Um, probably next time I just buy a new one just to be like, I don't know, like I'm sure this is all just cosmetic rust and like a, like a covering, but I'd probably just buy a new one just because you're in there next time. Um, and then so now you have that, that piece. These springs, those guys, and your poking weak shoes. So now that everything's clean and everything off, we can put it all back and install it. So I put this piece back on, and now we just have to put the shoes, springs, and the bar piece, and then the shoes with the springs so how you want to put this on I will do the top one first you'll notice that the shoe has one bar like it's different on each sides so the side with the kind of notch in it that's the side that goes onto the uh, um, I don't know what this piece is called but onto that piece and then you want to line it up with the hole that's on the inside there. There, this is rusted. So I just got it all back together. Um, I did find a way easier way to do this than I did the last one. And I kind of feel like an idiot doing the way I did the last one or the other side. Um, so the spring thing is in place. Spring, spring is there. And then the bar and that. So how you do this is you put this piece on first. Um, and then you put the top shoe on and you have to, it's very easy with a pair of pliers. 
um, and you scrunch it down and it doesn't matter what side it goes on. Just remember, this is a tip, is that whatever side this button hook on the top is, the actual hook is on the opposite side. So this one, the hook is on this side. You gotta scrunch it and push it over. Um, and then there's this spring. And then you do the bottom shoe and you put the spring on this one, put it, connect it together, and then you pull the shoe down and you lock it underneath here. And then you put in this spring and then you put the bow on and then this spring is very easy. You just grab pliers and pull it in there. Um, and then you want to make sure it doesn't like wiggle and move around obviously. And then now you can put your rotor on. So I had a bit of issues on this side and I realized the reason why this side locks up after you poke it for a bit is because the poking brake cable doesn't actually release all the way. So due to that, I could not fit the rotor on top of the poking brake um, thing, like assembly. So I just took it all off and I just put the rotor on without a parking brake on this side, but there's still a parking brake on the driver's side. Um, so that's a little, I won't take it to a shop to see if they can do anything about releasing that parking brake where I don't have to buy a new cable. And then if I end up buying a new cable, I will, um, I will do a video on that. Or, yeah. So now we'll just want to put the pads on, pads, caliper on and do that and that's the easiest part of this whole thing so you can release your caliper and grease up the pads um i just followed what the hawk performance thing did and it said to evenly coat the back plate in the uh brake grease so i did that so it's all back together um these bolts are tight the two rear ones no wiggle room at all um, and the pads and the springs are in. And these ones, this one down here, if you look on the pin, um, they kind of have this cup on the end of the pin. And the one that ripped out um, the cup kind of got stuck in that real hole there. And I had to punch it out again before I could put the new pin in. Because it wasn't fitting and that's what it was. So I just took a punch and I stuck it in there and it came out. And then the pin slid in fine. So now we just gotta put the wheel on. And then we're done and we can go to the front. Let's do the wheel torque. You wanna torque it to 105 foot pounds is the official spec. Um, me personally, I like to go like three to five more than what the spec is just to be safe. I think overall, um, for the rear brake job on the S60R, besides the mishaps that I encountered, such as the very first one, which was the pins getting stuck, and then the, uh, and then the parking brake not fitting right, and then kind of screwing around with that spring on the other side. But the spring is entirely my fault. I should have figured out the better way to do that. Um, but other than those two mishaps, I say that this went by pretty good and you could definitely like do the rear and the front definitely within a day um and i'd say that on a if i'm comparing this to the brake job on a p3 xc60 with stock brakes um i'd say that 
probably the P3 is easier just because it's bolts instead of the pins and the two bolts. Um, obviously, like the pins don't hold in the, uh, like there's the mainspring on the P3 caliper and then there's the two caliper bolts. Then you can get your pads out. This one you have to go through the pins and then the bolts and that just adds like a whole other level of stuff that can go wrong and stuff that you need to remove. Um, but comparing this to a P3 brake job, I say the P3 is easier, but at the end of the day, they're pretty much simple. Um, when I get the KT4, I'm excited to uh, for when I get my KT4 big brake kit on the front to install that and see uh, how much easier or harder it will make changing pads and stuff. So, so that was the rear. Um, tomorrow, I'll do the front and make a new video for that because that way it will just be organized better. Um, and I'll put all the part numbers in the description and I'll put all the part numbers. I'll put like markers in the description of where you can go to in the video for certain parts. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, this is the XC60 project and uh, follow me on Instagram if you want to keep up with my XC60 build, which is sponsored by KT4 Performance.